This talk is about uh, data minimization and how to achieve it by construction in trigger action platforms. This is work joined with uh, my PhD student, uh, Mohammed, who is still waiting for a US visa, uh, and uh, Daniel Hedin at Chalmers. OK, trigger action platforms, what are they uh, about? Essentially about connecting otherwise unconnected services. Uh, and uh, they allow building very useful automations. Uh, one example you can see here uh, of an automation that says that if there's a new picture on Instagram, uh, save it on Dropbox. OK, very simple automation. And users use trigger action platforms to implement those. Popular tabs include um, uh, IFT and Zapier and Microsoft uh, Power uh, Automate. In fact, IFT is a very dynamic company located just one mile uh, away from here along Market Street, doing uh, very interesting things. And they have millions of users and run uh, and connect uh, hundreds of services. OK, so all this is uh, very interesting. And recently, uh, trigger action platforms have added a new way to add more sources to these kind of automations called queries. OK, so how does it work? Here's, um, uh, again, an example. So we want to set an automation. If something comes from a trigger, in this case, the trigger is just time, 8 o'clock in the morning, then we look up in uh, user's Google Calendar and see, OK, uh, is there a, a first meeting? And if it's in the office, then uh, the action would be to send a notification on, uh, on Slack. So you see unconnected services all orchestrated very nicely uh, using this automation. Trigger, time, query, uh, calendar, and uh, action is Slack. Many of these uh, triggers and queries, they are sensitive. They uh, receive information uh, that is sensitive. And uh, the way it typically works, actually, all this information is pumped to the platform. Okay? So what do you mean? Well, um, essentially what happens on a platform like Ift is that you run the app. This is the code that the app uh, runs for our running example. Uh, if the first uh, location of the first uh, meeting is office, all right, you see here, then uh, we look up the title of that meeting. Right? That's uh, the code that we run here. So as this app is triggered, actually we make a request and full and and and, and uh, fetch a full uh, sequence of events that correspond to uh, events from the calendar so essentially the way it works is that you get an um, uh, array of 50 most recent events uh, coming off from google calendar including all this detailed data like title location and meeting times all that goes to the app and then the app um, from that uh, data actually turns out that it only needs the uh, location and the title of the first meeting. Okay, so all this data is pumped from query, and only a fraction of that data is used. Okay, so that's uh, interesting. Uh, uh, so for the action, only a small fraction of the data is needed. Uh, so what we observe is that uh, the approach is very much push all. So data from queries is pushed in this kind of coarse grained way, and only a small portion is needed. This is at odds with data minimization, which requires be careful about uh, uh, data. So essentially, the idea here is that um, rather than uh, pushing all and then deciding whether we actually we need it or not, in data minimization, we talk about necessary information. OK, what is actually necessary for the purpose of this, this application? Uh, so um, essentially, yeah, the current approaches, uh, they don't think so much about that. They think more about functionality, and they, they uh, end up doing over privileges and pushing uh, rather than being more fine-grained. OK, so that's the motivation. What, um, uh, what's around in this area? Well, there's a previous approach called MeetTap. We had a paper in Usenix Security last year where we have looked at this problem. And we said that, well, uh, we can do pre-processing. So the trigger services can figure out from the app how much data is actually needed and drop redundant attributes. So that was the idea of MeetTap. It supports both static mode, when you look at the app, statically analyze and you know, figure out what's needed, uh, and dynamic mode. In the dynamic mode, uh, essentially, well, how can you do this dynamically if um, you're not the platform, you're just a trigger service? Well, uh, in MeetTap, you pre-run the app just with the purpose of uh, figuring out what is actually needed. You record all the accesses, and, only, and then you ship only those attributes. Okay? So for our example, this would be analyzing the app and extracting the title uh, of the first meeting, location of the first meeting, and sending only that. 
Okay, so there are uh, some issues with precision and also uh, with this approach you need a trusted client because um, you know, don't, don't want the trigger action platform to modify the app and try to pretend that they need more attributes than, uh, than the app actually uses. So that's where uh, our work uh, comes into play called LazyTap. So from the word lazy, you could also maybe already guess what we are doing. We are being lazy in terms of lazy computation. We try to run the app on the platform and pull all the necessary data on demand. So that's the key idea of uh, LazyTap. Uh, this way allows us to be uniform about triggers and queries. So uh, it doesn't matter how many sources of information there are. We can pull all of them on demand as we go. We are input sensitive in a sense that uh, we are only pulling the data that is needed for a particular run of the app, right? So we don't over approximate uh, unnecessarily. Um, and um, essentially, yeah, so we use a combination of uh, proxy objects and uh, uh, deferred computation by thunks to make sure that uh, for the developer of the app, it's fully transparent. Uh, it's exactly the same code. So the uh, fetch on demand part is happening behind the scenes. The way it's supported is by a shim on trigger or query services, and shims are already needed for compatibility with platforms like Ift. So it's not that you, know, you need a, a new shim. Existing shims can include uh, this kind of interaction and providing data on demand. So let's look at um, the example uh, that we saw before, how this would be uh, addressed by, by LazyTap. Okay, so remember that we have a trigger uh, at eight o'clock in the morning every day. We trigger the execution of the app. Now, essentially just tells the platform that um, uh, yeah, it's time to wake up, check if there is a first uh, meeting. We start running uh, the code there. The first thing we encounter is uh, events.where uh, for the first meeting. Uh, if it's, we need to access that. That initiates a uh, uh, request to the query service, which is Google Calendar, uh, which essentially initializes the shim, and the shim uh, very much caches exactly the same thing that what, what Ift would have uh, sent uh, originally uh, to, uh, you know, the Google Calendar would originally have sent to Ift. Now it's cached on the shim, it's not shared, it's still on the, on the query side, but now it can be used in order to communicate with our, our, with our app. So okay, now we know that uh, query service is ready, and then uh, essentially the first thing we provide is this you know, fine-grained piece of information with the location of the meeting. Okay, so if the location is indeed the office, then uh, we take the then branch of this execution, and then we access the title of the meeting. So okay, as we need additional piece of information, so we are very careful here about uh, consuming only things that we need, we request that from the, the query service, the shim provides us exactly that. So now we shared exactly two attributes that are needed for the execution of this app. And now we can use the title uh, in the action uh, and notify on Slack. So that's how LazyTap indeed works. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, the elegance of this approach is that it's seamless for app developers. Uh, it's exactly the same JavaScript programs they can write with exactly the same APIs. Uh, all the magic happens uh, behind the scenes because we don't need to do pre-run of the, of the app here. So yeah, it's um, any kind of non-determinism uh, is fine because it's you know, particular to the trace that we are taking in the app. So uh, yeah, and then what happens uh, uh, behind the scenes is that all objects um, that are related to triggers and actions, sorry, triggers and, and queries are uh, turned into remote objects. So the app interacts them exactly in the way that originally did but behind the scenes, uh, there's a fetching on demand going on. Okay, so combination of uh, proxy objects and thunking in JavaScript uh, gives us exactly that. So we've done a formal model uh, of this approach, uh, taking a core language and extending it with primitives for triggers, queries, actions, and thunking to talk about deferred computation. And essentially, the formal guarantees we establish is uh, direct correspondence between the lazy objects that we built uh, with the strict objects that uh, uh, correspond to the original executions. So this is needed for correctness of the approach that LazyTab doesn't, uh, yeah, so preserve, preserves the, the semantics of the programs. So one result we show is indeed correctness, and the other one is precision in the sense that 
uh, we are at least as precise as any kind of uh, reasonable pre-processing approach that does uh, uh, dependency analysis. Okay, so we have uh, all uh, kind of reasons to improve precision instead. Indeed, that's what we are showing in the evaluation, that the precision is improved. We implement this approach based on a uh, setup uh, uh, that uh, represents what IFT is doing. And there we evaluate uh, our approach on the collection of different apps. Some are from uh, App Store of IFT, some of our own, representing different scenarios. So the first app here is exactly the running example that I showed, where we have at 8 o'clock in the morning, we look up the meeting. So you see that at the moment, what uh, you would have in IFT is that the full uh, array of previous events from calendar would be sent okay, to, from Google Calendar to IFT. With static mint app, you will analyze the code and say, well, I only need the, the, the title and the location of the first meeting, but you always send that. For a lazy tap, well, it depends on which uh, branch you take. There's a guard. Remember that we, you know, we see if there's a location is in the office or not. And if it's not in the office, we never share, we never share the, the, uh, the title of the meeting. That's why you have one or two for lazy tap in the first row. Uh, second example is um, a real app from uh, if store uh, giving a movie recommendation. The trigger is that you switch on a TV, and then uh, it offers you uh, random choice from your personalized list of liked movies. In the case of uh, uh, IFT, essentially you end up sending the whole list. So, uh, and then the random pick is done uh, on the platform. Uh, in the case of static, static uh, min tab, well, you don't know how random uh, number generation would work out in, in a run because you're doing a static analysis. So you end up sending the whole list as well. For us, we share exactly the one you know, movie that is uh, selected from the run because that's the one that we uh, pull on demand. The third example here shows that we can also do uh, chaining of um, uh, queries, and that's something that IFT cannot do, but it's very nicely fits into our framework. So when one query parameters, uh, parameters of one query can depend on output uh, when you process another query. So the app here is that um, uh, you leave the house, and then the automation looks up the location of the first meeting and uh, finds the nearest parking to that meeting. Okay, so two queries involved, calendar and, and Yelp to get the, the parking uh, spots. And also, yeah, so and then depending on the availability of parking and whether or not there's a you know, working meeting, we can minimize uh, uh, how much information is shared. And that's you know, nothing that a static mean tab can do, but we can. So overall, if you do you know, some average computations, essentially we end up uh, dropping 95% of attributes of what you know, mean tab would otherwise uh, propagate and uh, 38 compare, percent compared to uh, static mean tab. Okay, so um, maybe that's a summary of comparison. We go to conclusions. So essentially what we are doing is on-demand approach to uh, uh, trigger action computation, where instead of pushing everything and then deciding what we need, uh, we are very careful and um, pull data in an on-demand fashion. We are input sensitive, so uh, we are only taking data that is needed for a given run. We, we do it in a seamless way. Uh, the existing code can be reused in our framework. We show correctness, precision, and show practical results of data minimization. If you feel like trying this tool, please check out the, the URL. Thank you. I will again uh, take the opportunity to ask you the first question. So. Uh, Nice talk. So if uh, if the trigger parameter updates, right? Like uh, for example, at the first time, like it asks you the why the location, but later the trigger parameter updates with like time or other stuffs. In that case, like the how the caching mechanism or the shim layers work. So in case of updates of parameters, so uh, essentially the way this this works is that so uh, if there's any update, that means there will be new triggering event, right? So everything is. Uh, the model of computation is extremely simplistic. It's always you know, trigger, app, action, right? It's always this triple. So uh, in a way, your computation of the app is batch job. It cannot interact with anything. And that's what makes it this uh, very elegant and beautiful setting to study and allows us to you know, perform static analysis or perform this kind of on-demand uh, computation that with respect to a given input, right, we know exactly what, what else is needed. So. Um, 
Yes, essentially the answer is that the computational model is so simple that you know, we can do this, and new events, well, basically they would trigger new executions, so we can repeat uh, this for other executions. Thank you. So do we have any other question? If not, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.